Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Owen from Paladin. How are y'all doing? Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Today, we're going to be talking about the uh, fall update, what's happened in 2019. Fall release, you should all have it today. So we're going over some material that you will, um, if you haven't discovered some features already, you're going to be able to see it here. So I want to do a quick check just to make sure that you can all see my screen. I'm seeing from the audience view that the presentation is up. It says user me fall uh, 2019. If you can just raise your hand, just click on that little hand symbol next to your name. Thank you, Joe, appreciate it. All right, very good. Got lots of responders. Thank you guys so much. I just wanna make sure you can see the screen. I don't necessarily care if you can see me, but I've got my webcam on, so you should be able to see me as we're going through this presentation. So thank you much for uh, very much for attending. Again, my name is Charles Owen with Paladin. Been here about 10 years, and uh, often I do webinars, which uh, I enjoy doing tremendously. Hopefully, they're useful for you and informative. This one, as I mentioned, is going to be talking about what is in our new release, some of the new integrations, putting the data to work for you, some of the new features and updates we've done, and then also a special notice that we'll go over. So we'll discuss uh, some of the features of the new releases. Also, we are introducing chat support, integrations with Deputy and Easy Ad, which are really nice applications, uh, and new features and updates, which we'll get into one by one, and then also talk about Microsoft 7 end of life. All right, just to move on, before I uh, jump into the next screen, I just want to let you know if you have any questions, you can address the question box at the bottom and you can put a question in. If I don't get to it during the presentation, I'll get to it at the end. We are also recording this. This is being recorded, so you can watch this at another time if you get distracted or you have to help the customer and tend to the store, that's fine. You can, uh, it should be on the website as early as uh, today, but most likely uh, to within the next 24 to 48 hours. All right, so let's get started. This uh, should be fairly quick. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on each of these features. What we're doing is we're just giving you a high level overview of what's in the system. So starting out, this is going to, uh, you can see specific information about this in two areas. One, if you go to the help portal, which you can access by from anywhere in the world, by just going to portal.palinumpos.com, and that will get you to our portal. Then you can go into the release notes, and Spring 2019 Release Guide, or just type 2019 under the search bar in all categories, and it will come up with the Spring Release Guide, showing you all the different features and how they work. Uh, next, we also have a webinar on this topic as well. So if you go into the webinars and you type 2019, you should be presented with a 2019 webinar features list, and that goes into detail each one of these specific things. Now, I have talked about this in some of the smaller user group conferences that we have at the different markets. This presentation is geared towards specifically to ACE, but it's handy and relevant for all customers. So if you're not in a store, hang in there because we've got a lot of good material to share with you. There's just a couple of little things that we added for, for ACE. All right, so we've added, we've added uh, tech support or chat support, which you can get to with our application. If you go to help on the menu, you click the first item, I believe it is, it says uh, chat support. Go ahead, put in your questions. We have people standing by to answer your questions. If they're easy questions, great, we can get them done through chat. Uh, if not, what we'll do is we'll create a case and, and pass you on to somebody who can address your, your needs. But it's just another way that we have given you another medium to interface with us, to ask questions about uh, what's going on, what's happening in your system, and or uh, if you have any questions on, on specific new features. All right, next, integrations. So the integrations that we'll be sharing with you today, one is Deputy, which is a really cool product. It is a time clock, but besides the time clock, it also does employee scheduling. So this is, Tremendously beneficial, especially if you're an organization with, you know, two, three employees, not really a big deal. It shouldn't, doesn't take you a lot of time to do scheduling. But if you've got 12, 20, 
or more employees, it, this will help you with your scheduling. Not only will it help you with your scheduling based on uh, the customized needs of all of your employees and staff members, but it also interfaces with Paladin. It looks at the busy times during the day and it helps you schedule out your resources accordingly. Tremendous product. You can sign up at www.deputy.com slash integrations slash Paladin uh, today if you want, and you can have this product working. It's relatively painless to install. You People have been asking for a time clock forever in Paladin. We just went a step further and gave you employee scheduling and the integration with uh, looking at the uh, schedules. Next is Easy Add. Easy Add, a number of you were probably using this before we had an integration to them because this is a phenomenal product. It's an easy to use suite of marketing technologies, as it says here. It does in store signage, video, print signs, real time inventory, pricing, and competitive price comparisons. And that's all from within an app. It synchronizes with Paladin Point of Sale, sale data and it projects that information onto monitors either around your store or on the app. You gotta check it out. You can sign up for this and find more information about it at www.easyadtv.com slash paladin. To move to the new features and updates. ACE closed loop gift card program. So ACE has completely revamped their ACE gift card processing. In doing so, uh, it, it created a, a lot of work for, uh, for us and we were able to deliver by the time it was rolled out and there will be continuing, we'll be continuing to update this and uh, improve it over time. But we gave you the capability to do this as of today. So when you process a payment for a gift card, it's gonna prompt you for the ACE gift card card number. And the only thing different today than, than what you were doing before is you've got to type in that number for the ACE gift card number. So you just look at the number on the gift card, type it in, and it will allow you to load a gift card when you're uh, selling gift cards in your store for ACE. Next, when you process or redeem a card, it's going to be fairly similar. You just bring up the credit card information, hit ACE gift card or F3, It'll prompt you with ACE gift card number again. Type in that gift card number that's on there and it will process it accordingly. You probably, if you're using ACE gift cards today, you have this feature, you're familiar with this, you already know what it's capable of. And like I said, over time, we'll be enhancing this, this to automate it further. Purchase orders. So what have we done here? So in the past, I've had a lot of people ask me if they, if we could uh, if, or if they could go ahead and change the quantity and or the cost of a purchase order that's already been sent off. So it's kind of one of those things, well, the order's already been sent, what do you need to change? And we had enough folks that were uh, getting calls from their vendors saying, well, no, we, we have some changes to the order, we're gonna change it. And you've always been able to do this, by the way but just during the receiving event. This will allow you to bring up the PO that you've sent off at any time and change the quantity and change the cost and save that into the PO. So at the time of the truck delivery, you will have this new information in the system. So a great feature. Uh, good job guys for, uh, for requesting that it worked out really well and uh, hopefully you'll be able to leverage it. Next, purchase orders. So we've made a number of, of uh, enhancements to the purchase order. There's two parts to this particular one. It's called order analyst. And the first part is you can now take the RF gun or run a suggested order or run a historical sales report and produce a purchase order and create a purchase order no matter how you create the purchase order. If you do not specify a supplier, it will prompt you with a couple of questions. And what it will do is it will split that P up accordingly based on who is in supplier number one position. So I'll show you an example of what pops up. So when you bring up that purchase order that doesn't have a supplier, it will go ahead and prompt you with this question. Do you want to split the current purchase order? That's all you need to be concerned about. Order based on lowest supplier costs is, uh, is part two of, of this particular feature. 
But right now, all we're doing is splitting the current purchase order, and it will split it accordingly. And this example says the PO has been successfully split into 19 individual POs. That's, that's a lot of shopping, a lot of orders. And uh, if you go around your store and you either use a gun or you run just order for your entire store, don't specify a supplier, it can do this for you and automate that process. Great feature. So here's what it looks like. On the left-hand side, you've got your full-on pre-split order. Once you answer that question, yes, I want to split it, it goes ahead and splits it accordingly based on who's in supplier number one position. Presents, presents that, in this case, supplier A and supplier B down below. And that's all there is really to it. Uh, here's, what the, here's what it looks like on the PO screen. You've got the split working purchase order. That's the original PO, so we don't get rid of that. You can remove it, however, when you're done with it and you've created your two supplier A and supplier B orders. All right, so make sure you do not run an order, do not submit the working purchase order, which is the original, and the other ones because they are duplicates. You wanna make sure, get rid of that original one if, uh, if you don't need it any longer and you've got your orders with suppliers already specified. All right, here's the next, the next part, part two. So this is based on best cost. So we actually track the sales and the, the, the costs through electronic data interchange or EDI. So if you have an EDI supplier like ACE and you have a, a secondary like Oracle or True Value or whoever it might be, and you wish to bid, uh, uh, accordingly and run your orders based on whoever was at the last lowest cost, you can do that. So this is what it's gonna do. It's gonna compare supplier costs across your EDI systems, automatically order from the lowest cost EDI supplier. So there is one thing to note, this is uh, limited to a few suppliers. All the, one I, all the ones I mentioned are supported and others can be, can be supported uh, upon request. So here's how it works. So we do track the market cost, the minimum order quantity or the order quantity and the broken carton and last time it was updated, the last date it was updated for each supplier. And that's tracked in the system. So one thing you need to note, and it says important here on the right hand side is if only one EDI vendor exists on the inventory item, order line analysts from the EDI, uh, Order analyst orders from the EDI vendor, whether it was cheaper than the non-EDI supplier or not. So um, it will order from the one that has the supplier number one position. Yeah, I think I understand that right, yes. If you do not have, if no EDI vendor exists, then it will just, it will just automatically order from the EDI vendor, assuming that's your primary vendor, which is logical. All right, next, we move on. There's another feature. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but you know, it, it still amazes me that nobody has discovered, or a lot of people haven't discovered the right-click feature in invoicing and on purchase orders. In invoicing, you have a plethora of different line items that you can choose from, commands that you can choose from, which some are accessible by function keys and some aren't, where they're just accessible by the right-click. But it's very powerful, it lets you do things like insert lines, delete lines, insert notes, add precision, which means up to four or six decimal points for price and quantity, respectively. Uh, profit analyst, which tells you the cost, the profit, and the uh, margin for each item in your invoice, and then the overall invoice. Cool features, and then, of course, footage calculator. And you can also insert subtotals for those that are building contractors that are building houses and you want to break up electrical from plumbing from flooring and all that you can do that and put subtotals in your invoice you may also update current prices so if you have a quote it's been in there six weeks they come back say, hey i gotta update my prices one button will do that for that recalled quote now here's a feature we're presenting today it's the search invoice and quote so if you go to right click and you want to let's see if five 500 items in this invoice. That's a lot. But, uh, you know, there are some that have a, a lot of different items. Rather than scrolling through and looking for the item, we have a search button. So you just click on that search invoice quote, type in what you want to look for. It can either be the part number or the description, and it will locate it in the invoice. 
All right, moving on. Monitor credit limit overrides. So in the past, you can do, you've always been able to do credit limit overrides. So you need a, a manager's approval. Let's say they have a credit limit of a thousand bucks or at 990, they buy something for, you know, a hundred bucks, they're gonna be over. And when that happens, a manager can override this. In the past, we didn't have a way to see who was overriding those, and now we do. It's under our transaction or under the salesperson exception report, and we've added a clause that just says uh, include accounting overrides. And if you do that, here's what it's going to look like. You can see it actually goes ahead and shows you the amount that has been overridden. All right, customers' accounting notes or account notes. So this is something that's been requested for a long time. Hopefully, this will be valuable for you. You can go in and now put notes in your customer records. It's going to be date and time stamp. Also, list the employee who put the note in there. And in this case, we have one put in on April 16th, uh, employee pal and support, and it just says Richard came in today and wants a quote. So you can put all kinds of information in here. You can um, have as many messages as you want. And as you can see up here on the top right hand, under the add button, it says zero slash 650. So when you enter a note, you have up to 650 characters for that note. Now this note will not be presented at checkout. This note is for the accounting. It is uh, for anybody who has access to the, to the customer module. You can go in and if you go to customer module, credit tab down below under payment history, you're gonna see the account notes right there. And you just click on that, and you can add notes to your heart's content. Moving on, address verification system. So we've added a few features that will enable you to hopefully get some better rates on credit cards. The more information you have, the less risk it is. So the credit card companies, the interchange rates uh, differ tremendously based on what type of card, how you have that card, whether a card's been verified. We've incorporated the uh, the full address, which is going to help with uh, making sure that card is is at less risk. So hopefully, you know, it'll be a it'll be a better rate. All right, you can put that information in if you go to the customer module electronic tab and edit the credit card data, and you just put your address in there. And you probably already have this. If you don't, you can add this, and you'll see a little green checkbox next under the ABS column which will indicate that it is a verified address, which is important. All right, so some of the reports have changed. You'll notice uh, on the accounting summary report, we've added down below information on taxable and non-taxable subtotals, sales tax totals, and service charge totals, all listed for that time period that's showing on your accounting summary report. So this is information. Certain people requested this. You may or may not need this, but it's there for you. So let, let us know if, uh, if you need more information than this. Moving on to discontinued items report. So we've updated this to include the location ID. So you'll notice on the right, there's another column on that report. It says location ID. Negative one, of course, means null, meaning there is none for that particular item. But the other ones do show location. So this will help you when you're trying to consolidate all your discontinued items and you want to go look for it on the shelf, it'll give you the location where that is. Also on the, re the inventory count list report. So this is one of my favorite reports. If you've heard my webinars before, you notice that I'm kind of partial to this report. It gives you a lot of really, really handy information. As you can see on the screen in this report example, I've suppressed um, between C and R, all those columns, so I can show you on the screen what we've added. So we've added an underscore line under counted quantity, on order, amount, the last counted date, and the last received date. We do this so some folks that want to do counts by hard copy, you can do that. Most people take the RF gun, the radio frequency gun, they walk around, they do an immediate count, and that changes the system immediately. But if you've got if you've got a certain section and you've got limited access to RF guns, which can be addressed, by the way, if you just buy uh, additional ones, and we do sell them. However, uh, this can be printed out and given to an employee, and they can go over to the section and count. And this can be 
listed in the order of the location ID or location name. All right, moving on, bin tag. So we've added another bin tag style. Now, first of all, before I talk about this bin tag style, number 33, I don't know if you've all noticed, but at our, in our LTSR catalog, you'll notice on the right here, it says LTSR. LTSR stands for Labels, Tags, Signs, and Reports. This catalog is at least 40 pages, and it has a full uh, listing and examples of all the different labels that we provide. It's very important that you get the label that's going to work for your store. And it's so important that we've designed up to 33 of these, and this is number 33 that we're showing you today as an example. I don't know particularly what information this has added. It might have added um, a location. I'm not sure exactly what's been added. Oh, 16, I think that's the <clears throat> on order amount. So <clears throat> we'll have to look at that in more detail, but it shows it in the LTSR catalog. So if you go to the LTSR catalog, so go to portal.palin.pos.com. So portal.paladinpos.com and search for the term LTSR and then click on LTSR catalog and it will bring up the PDF and you can download that. We do update this frequently every time we add a report or a label. But I will tell you that there was one in here that kind of caught me by surprise. It's a sale label. So this has been added somewhat recently but you can go in and produce a sale list. So if you go into your sale list screen and you wanna produce a tag for each one of those items where it says, hey, here's the normal price in small and then here's the current cost in big and you know the sale cost, that's right on that label. And it's not generated through bin tag signs or labels, it's generated through actual sales. So you can go into the inventory under the general tab and click on print a sign or uh, yes print a sign and it will add that particular item or append it to the file to the cell file or you can go into the cell list and produce a whole slew of tags for a particular sale id so that's a great one so what is uh we've talked about bin tag style 33 so i will just move on which brings me to the very end slide so Windows 7, end of life, what are the advantages of moving to Windows 10? Well, number one, Microsoft is, is ending support as of January 2020 for Windows 7. So it's important, it's imperative that you look at alternatives and you start swapping out. Now you can upgrade, I think it's, don't quote me on this, but I think it's under $200 to, or just under $200 to upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. It is a viable solution providing you have the right configuration of a system. You may or may not have the what it needs in that system to support Windows 10. Windows 10 um, you know, itself isn't gonna necessarily be advantageous if you're using an old system with outdated memory and low capacity and and it's not up to the clock speed that it needs to be. So consider this, consider moving all of your Windows 7 to 10 or consider upgrading those terminals where you actually replace them with new ones and then bring the old ones home, use them for whatever. Uh, but it's important that this is, this is commercial equipment, this is um, industrial strength stuff and you can't be messing around with an old update in Windows 7 because you will be at risk. All right, the last slide here talks about uh, checking out the spring 2019 release guide, which again, you can just type the word 2019 in the search results and find that under Paladin, under portal.palinpos.com. You may also go to our webinars. You'll see all the webinars we've done in the past, the webinar that's uh, for easy ad, the webinar for deputy, the webinar for all of the features within 2019 release, which we've done, all of that's available on our website. Hopefully these tools are are used. And obviously the, the fact that you are sitting here listening to me speak and pontificate about the, uh, the Windows uh, or the spring 2019 release tells me that you are doing what you need to do to learn more about the product. 
We want you all to be well informed about the system. Last thing, I, I, I don't like taking calls where somebody calls and say, hey, is this particular feature going to get written? You say, well, it's been in there for a year. That's always uh, disappointing when they could be have been using that product. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Next week on Tuesday, we're doing another webinar. This one's going to be very specific. It's going to be targeted at the upgrade from Windows 7 to 10, what the advantages are, what the benefits are, what some of the risks are if you don't do it and some of the alternatives as well. So I hope to see you then. Appreciate you guys. I don't see any questions. I'll give you a half a minute or so. If you want to throw a question at me, we can certainly do that now. Hopefully this was pretty straightforward, gave you the information you needed. Now, I will also say that this is not the end all. There are other features that have been added that have not been highlighted here. So keep up to date that Windows, uh, the, the, the uh, display when you first log into Paladin, comes up that feature browser. You can search for information there as well. And we've got information on the 2019 release in there as well. So hopefully, I don't see any questions, so this was, uh, this was good for you. I will uh, look forward to seeing you next week. I will be here at the same time, 9 o'clock on Tuesday, the 24th. And you guys, everybody, have a great day. Thank you so much for attending. Take care.